Next, we're going to talk about the effects on momentum in the case of special relativity. And so, again, as we did in the last example, we're going to take a proton, accelerate it to very high velocity, 99.9% .9 of speed of light, and calculate the proton's momentum. And of course, remember that in non-relativistic situations, momentum is always equal to the mass times velocity. But in relativistic situations, we have to be careful. The mass is no longer the rest mass, the mass is now relativistic mass. So what we should do instead, we can say that P is equal to m sub naught divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared times velocity. So this now becomes the relativistic mass. And of course, we could simplify that by simply writing that P is equal to gamma m sub naught times v, where gamma is simply 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So let's find out what gamma is equal to. Gamma is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Plug it in the velocity for v, this is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus 0.999c quantity squared over c squared. Of course, the C's cancel out right away, and then with a the calculator, we can figure out what that is equal to. I don't quite remember from the last time, but so we get uh, 0.999, we square that, we subtract that from 1, then we take the square root of that, and uh, we take the inverse of that. So we get gamma is equal to 22.366. So that goes in here, so the momentum is equal to 22.366 times the rest mass of a proton, which is 1.67, times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, times the velocity, which was 0.99c, so 0.999 times c, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And that will give us the relativistic momentum of this proton. So times 1.67 e to the 27 minus uh, times 0.999 times 3 e to the 8 equals, and so the momentum is equal to 1.12, and let's see if I can see this right, yeah, times 10 to the minus 17, and of course, what are the units for momentum? It's mass times velocity, so it's kilograms, meters per second, and that's how you calculate relativistic momentum. Now, it turns out there's actually a second equation of a relativistic momentum, which is this one right here. And this one says that the total energy of a particle squared is equal to the rest mass of the particle squared plus p times c squared, p being the relativistic momentum, c being the speed of light. So let's calculate the momentum using this equation. The first thing we need to do is isolate uh, the momentum of that equation, so we can write p times c quantity squared is equal to, I'm simply turning the equation around, is equal to this e squared, and then moving this over to the other side, it becomes minus the quantity m sub naught c squared quantity squared. The next thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by c squared. So I end up with p squared is equal to e squared minus m sub naught c squared quantity squared divided by c squared. And finally, taking the square root of both sides, I can solve for p. So p is equal to the square root of e squared minus m sub naught c squared quantity squared, and the whole thing divided by the speed of light. All right, now if we plug in the, um, the numbers that we have, uh, we should be able to find momentum. Although I don't know yet what my total energy is, so I'm going to plug in total energy for that equation. So p is equal to the square root of, that would be m c squared quantity squared minus m sub naught c squared quantity squared all divided by c. And of course, the, uh, the relativistic mass can be written as gamma times the rest mass. So the momentum p is equal to the square root of uh, gamma m c squared, the whole thing, oh, that's m sub naught c squared, minus m sub naught c squared, and the whole thing squared, all divided by c. Now, algebraically, you can see what happens. The first term has an m sub naught c squared squared. The second term has an m sub naught c squared squared. So I can factor that out and then take it out of the radical sign. So that means I can write the momentum is equal to m sub naught c squared times the square root of gamma squared minus 1 all over the speed of light. And now I'm ready to plug in the numbers. 
Okay, so momentum is equal to the rest mass, which is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So plug in kilograms right there. Uh, C squared, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Uh, that's not squared, the whole thing is squared times the square root of gamma squared minus 1. Now gamma squared would be this number squared, so it would be uh, 22.366 squared minus 1, and the whole thing divided by the speed of light, which is 3 uh, times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now obviously uh, this C can cancel out one of those, so actually we can get rid of that and get rid of that. And finally, let's uh, work that out. So we have 22.366. We can square that. Subtract 1 from that. Minus 1. Take the square root. Multiply that, that times 3 times 10 to the 8. So times 3 e to the 8. And times 1.67 e to the 27 minus equals. And we should get the exact same result that we got over here. Let's take a look. And then sure enough, it's 1.12 times 10 to the minus 17 kilogram meters per second. And you can see that either equation will give you the correct, the correct, <laughs> correct uh, momentum, relativistic momentum. So take your pick, and either one will give you what you need. And that's how you do that.